If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open for you. Oh, oh, oh. Be encouraged, cause this day's for you. Don't you let this opportunity pass by. Good evening, everybody. It's Pastor Wendell Jones. I'm here with you tonight uh, because this, you know, we do Wednesday night. It's Bible study time. It's our time to to sit and talk. I know we call it Bible study time, but I've, I've been flirting with the idea of, 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 of calling it some some type of name that replies or refers to to leadership development because that's really what's in my heart to do. And uh, so many people teach from various books and what have you. Uh, the idea of leadership development. But here's what I've come to understand. Uh, the principles that prevail, the principles that are transcendent, the principles that have been uh, tried and tested and proven over and over again can be found in these 66 books that make up our Bible. And so what I'm trying to do with you tonight is is, is teach you how to lead your life, teach you how to grow in your life. And so we've been really, really uh, 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 delving deeply into our understanding about the Holy Spirit, that, that incredible member of the Trinity. We got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, however you want to call him, uh, and trying to, to emphasize his role in the earth. The Holy Spirit is God in the earth, and we need to deepen our relationship with him so that he can make us into the leaders, make us into the impactful people, the influential people that God has called us to be. You do know you're not supposed to be somewhere hidden, somewhere in the crowd, or somewhere hidden in the background. You're light and you, you need to be somewhere where you are being influential. And the person who was given the task, the person who was given the task to bring the best parts of you out of you is none other than the Holy Spirit. And this past Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost, which represents his triumphant return in his fullness uh, in the earth because man had been forgiven due to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But let, let I'm about to get into the lesson. We better pray. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for being our father. Jesus, we thank you so much for being our forerunner, our brother, our sacrifice, the lamb of God. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being God in the earth. You are God that dwells among us now. You're God that lives in us. You're God that walks alongside of us, leading us into all truth. And we are here to honor you and in hopes of elevating your importance in the lives of believers, but also putting you in front of the non-believers that they might see you as a person that they need to draw near to. Help me do that tonight. Help me, please. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we came from the book of Acts, Acts, the second chapter, and those first few verses said this, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Incredible thing happened on this day, 50 days after Christ ascended into heaven. Penta, 50, 50 days. Now, I'm going to do something a little different. Normally, I take you to the lesson, then I'll tell you what the takeaway is. But I'm going to flip it tonight. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to give you the takeaway now what I want you to come out of this lesson with. And here's what the takeaway said. The takeaway said, process is unavoidable, but the speed of your process is negotiable. If you're willing to fight for unity, the speed of your process is negotiable if you're willing to fight for unity. It is through this unity that you get access to power and this power has to be guided by your love for people and your determination to fulfill your calling. The Holy Spirit wants to introduce you to this world of suddenly. The term, the, the, the sermon's title was suddenly. 
what I was hoping to do for for our listeners on Sunday, what I'm hoping to do for you now, is is to is to dangle a carrot in front of you, uh, uh, um, a carrot of speed. All of us really want to get to a place of wholeness, get to a place of fulfillment, get to a place of satisfaction as quickly as we can. The Holy Spirit can facilitate that speed. Because here's the thing that, that as you heard in the in the uh, in the takeaway, it's this that we that we know about living in, in, in God's world is that every living thing has to go through process or has to be developed. Everything starts in seed form and grows into whomever he or she's supposed to be, whatever the plant's supposed to be, the animal's supposed to be. Anything that's subject to time has to develop into its fullness. But the good news is that speed is actually negotiable. Negotiable meaning that you can make arrangements, you can follow principles and precepts to speed this thing up. I, I, I need us to get that. And, I, and, I, and I, if you like me, you ought to get excited about that, especially when God has instructed us to number our days. God will subject you to process unless he does or performs a miracle. And miracles are rare. God is more inclined to take us through development. Watch this process because that time is often needed so that you and I can get understanding. God wants you and I to utilize time so that we can understand how to do a thing. Why? Because our ultimate responsibility to each other is to teach. And so you can't teach something that you don't understand. So everything you've gone through, listen to me now, everything you've gone through, you were supposed to get the lesson or as or as uh, 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 Proverbs 4, uh, 4 and 7, I believe, says, uh, and all you're getting, get understanding and everything that you go through, get understanding. You're supposed to get understanding, not yes, so that you don't repeat it again, but also so that you can teach others so they don't have to stumble through it again. I said something to our folks on Sunday, and I'm going to say it to you all tonight, is that whatever circles you run in to run, run with, whatever family you live with, whatever people that you call your friends, shame on us if everybody has to go through the same thing to get the same lesson. What ought to happen is only one of us in the group should be uh, blindsided ever. Because once we become blindsided, we understand that whatever comes upon us, God has already placed a lesson inside of it. So in the midst of my pain, my disappointment, or whatever emotion that that event stirs up inside of you, I've got to have enough ground. i got to be grounded enough to go, listen, God loves me enough that if this thing came upon me, he's already been there and he put something in it for me to learn. And so I've got to be able to steal my emotions, stable my emotions. I've got to be able to take notes while I'm crying. Take notes while I'm flirting with depression. Take notes when anxiety is breathing down the back of my neck because I can't, I cannot afford to go through something and not get the lesson. Because if I don't get the lesson, guess what's going to happen? It's going to repeat itself, and not only repeat itself with me, it may, it will repeat itself with my children. You know why? Because Daddy didn't teach them the lesson. One of the things that we talked about in the previous lesson that how God got this thing set up. He says, as 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 long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains. Genesis 8, 20, I believe it is. As long as the earth remains, then it goes on seed time harvest, all that good stuff. But as long as the earth remains, that opening phrase is painting a picture of patterns. It's it's, it's saying that the earth produces things in circular patterns. Life is cyclical. And so unless you get the lesson that you were ordained to get in that moment, it's going to come right back around to you. God is trying to raise us up in wisdom. God is trying to raise us up in understanding. Why? Because we have an enemy who's hoping to take full advantage of our ignorances. And so as we mature, or better yet, evidence of our maturity is that we have now learned to go through these seasons, these moments, these events, and still glean the lesson. And the best way to be able to do that is that while you are in it, you say, Holy Spirit, comfort me. 
So she's the comforter. Comfort me and then lead me into truth. Help me settle my emotions. Allow me to tap into your fruit of the spirit, self-control. Why? So I can hear the lesson. So I can see what you're trying to teach me. Okay? Now, if you if you got some sense of understanding what I just said, if you can master yourself in those moments or yield to the Holy Spirit, you, you really don't even have to master yourself. When the Holy Spirit comes with you, the scripture tells us that he brings self-control. You and I have to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit so that he begins to regulate our temperament. So we're no longer people that just go off and we're no longer people who have to seek revenge and get back at folk. We, we, we're above that now. We're above that now. We're not above going through different things. Still, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But whatever I go through, I'm able to tap into him to calm me down so I don't miss the lessons. And if I can get the lesson, I can graduate out of that cycle. Does that make sense to you? Now, the other thing I said to you is that the quickness, the speed at which you come through a thing can also be negotiated. You're going to go through process, but there's a way to get through it quickly. And the way to get through it, and we're not going to just, I'm not going to build a case for it like we normally do when we preach a sermon. I want to give this stuff to you straight up. The way to get to it is very clear in the text. The text says this about our disciples, the, the disciples, the 120 of them sitting up there in that upper room. I need you to see yourself in them. These are people who are rightfully frightened. After Jesus was crucified, they ran away from Jerusalem. Then the resurrected Christ appeared to them, which had to be something ridiculous. As a matter of fact, let's look at that. He, he appeared to them over in Acts 1 and verse 8. And he says to them, he, 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 he announces some things to them. He said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come. Let me change this to NESB. That's King James Version. Let me put in NESB. That way we can read it a little clearer. Give me one second, guys. NESB. Here we go. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and even the remotest parts of the earth. Then verse 9 says, And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received them out of their sight. They are looking at the they are looking at the resurrected Christ. And that had to be amazing. Because he's done everything he said he would do. He said, I'm, I'm, they're going to kill me, but I'm going to come back. And so as I told him Sunday, I said, listen, that, that, their confidence in him and their confidence in their association with him had to have gone through the roof. This man is the real deal. If there was ever any doubt left in their minds, this is them outside of the city of Jerusalem. Scripture says they were about a day's journey outside of Jerusalem, which means it equates to about 25 miles outside of Jerusalem. And they're talking to the resurrected Christ. And he's telling them some incredible stuff. He says, uh, uh, listen, he said, um, I'm getting ready or I've made arrangements for you to receive power. Not just any power. That word is dunamis. And that 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 means let me just read this the definition because I don't want to play around with that and try to remember it. Uh, it. It comes because you your very nature has changed. It's a power that allows God to trust you with miracles when necessary. It is a power that means you have excellence of soul. That means your mind and your will and your emotions are at their peak performance. It's a power that brings influence that allows you to, to attract wealth and riches. It's a power that allows you to attract resources. This is what Jesus is saying. You're going to have this thing called dunamis. And, and, and it's going to do something to you. Your very nature is going to change. 
meaning everything about you that normally hinders you, everything about you that normally get that trips you up, everything about you that normally creates triggers. He said, there's some power coming that's going to that's gonna take that away. Now, as I told you before, everything with God takes process. So he, he wasn't saying it, it's going to absolutely be instant, but he said, this power is going to be able to transform your nature. Another reason why you and I ought to be excited about yielding to the Holy Spirit, it will transform your nature. Not only that, this is a power that's going to give you excellence of soul. And your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. He says, you're going you're gonna to really think like you ought to think. You're going to be able to process stuff like you should be able to process things. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There's something important about how you rationalize stuff to be able to operate in this world that God has made. Another part of your, your, your soul is your will. That's your place of determination, meaning I've got that don't quit kind of attitude that's inside of me. Once I got a thing started, I know how to finish my course. But also excellence in my emotions. God doesn't get rid of your emotions. He puts your emotions in the proper place where they can be used properly. Right now, coming into this thing with God, our emotions oftentimes lead us astray because they are out of sorts. He says, that's going to happen. Imagine if your soul is clicking on all cylinders, how, 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 how you can better respond to life, better respond to people, better respond to circumstances where you never do things to put yourself in a bad spot. He said, that's going to happen. Not only that, this power that's going to have you is going to make you attractive for resources and for men to pour into your bosom, for people to see you as the valuable person that you are. This is what he's offering to you and me. When the Holy Ghost comes, the same thing he offered to them, he's offering to you. When the Holy Spirit comes and he's allowed to do his thing in you, it comes with this change of nature. And when your nature changes, you start moving toward excellence because your soul gets healed. And as your soul gets healed, you become clearer on your purpose and your value, which means you begin to be more valuable to men. You're more valuable to God, but you're also more valuable to men in the earth. And men now come to you, seek you out. And they pour into your, bit, your bosom. So now you have reason to obtain resources, even wealth, if necessary, in your calling. He said, I'll do that when the Holy Ghost has fully come. But he also said this to them. All of that was wonderful. But he says, go to Jerusalem. Now, if you're just reading that, you're like, okay, let's go. Let's head off to Jerusalem. What you, but you may not remember, Jerusalem was the scene of the crime. Jerusalem was where they crucified Christ. Jerusalem was where the disciples ran from. Jerusalem was where the witch hunt was still on looking for them. And Jesus said, go back to the place of danger, but also go back to the place of your responsibility. See, we're trying to figure out how to speed this thing up. First of all, I got to accept the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and his full functionality in my life. I got to go to the place that God's called me to go and stand in that might be a little terrifying to me, a little frightening to me, it might subject me to attack, to attacks. All of this is for you to get in the will of God. All of this is so that there's a need for you to have an excellence of soul. You don't need an excellent soul if you're outside of the will of God. You don't. You don't need all that stuff that the power promises you if you also want to be in a place of comfort. He has to stick you in a place where you can make change occur. Because all those tools that come with having power is for you to implement change. It's for you to implement order. And so these very disciples took a day's journey to walk back to the city. And they found themselves in this upper room. What facilitated the sudden arrival of the spirit? They were on one accord. When God's people get beyond themselves and begin to make the overall 
goal, the overall objective, the overall vision important. And they're able to get on one accord. God can move swiftly. When we get on one accord, the Holy Spirit can do his work swiftly to position us to be able to be instruments of his power. I need you to get that. Because one of the things that fights us from being able or resists us from being able to operate in all these wonderful things God has called us to do is number one, he never called you to do it all by yourself. Even from the days of Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. But he gives you hints throughout scripture. He said, unless two or three are gathered together, I'm, he said, then I'll be in the midst. But he also says, listen, uh, uh, one can set a thousand to flight, but two can set 10,000 to flight. That's, that's called power. One person is, 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 is can do some damage. You know, a thousand people to one to a thousand seems like a lot. But if I can just get one other person to be in agreement with me, we go from one thousand to ten thousand. God keeps trying to show you that he's trying to show us our power, our speed, rely on. It, it, it's found in our ability to come together. Because ultimately he's trying to build a body that's fitly joined together. It becomes easier for us to walk back into Jerusalem together. It becomes easier for us to, to, to huddle together in the upper room, being uncertain of the outcome of our lives or, or the days ahead, if we can do it together. We find strength together. We find comfort together. We feed off of each other's faith together. God is saying togetherness will allow, will give you the rule, give you, give you reason to even begin to negotiate with God about how quickly a thing ought to be done. And what even blew my mind even more as God continued to prove what I'm trying to teach to you is that when these disciples finally emerged from this room, having been filled with the Holy Ghost, they came out and they were speaking in other languages. You got to understand why that was why that was so important. It's, it's, it's a little different than what you see us doing in church today. They were speaking in known languages because going on in Jerusalem at that time was was the gathering for the uh, the harvest of the weeks, I believe it is. And so you had all these different people who spoke different languages coming into the city who were all being ruled uh, by the Roman Empire at that time. And so these people spoke different languages. But when the disciples, when these 120 disciples emerged from this upper room filled with the Holy Spirit, they had a power that allowed them to communicate with the people in their own language. And guess what God did? He suddenly added 3,000 people to the church in one day. Why? Because there was a concerted effort. There was a oneness in this. The Holy Spirit returning back to the earth in its fullness. It's not so that he can help facilitate good church, hot church. I love a great worship service. I absolutely do. I love a worship service where we feel the presence of God and, and, and you feel like you had an encounter. That's absolutely wonderful. But I'm here to convince you that the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit coming back is so that we can have this collective power, this group power. This world, which I believe led by the enemy, has tried to make us so individualistic. And we're so excited about the things that we have done on our own. I'm my own man, my own woman. I'm self-made. All this stuff that we tell ourselves, nobody is truly self-made. But imagine, no, it doesn't, with all that you've managed to accomplish, in reality, you have only set a thousand to flight. But if you could have just got one other, that number jumps exponentially to 10,000. We got, I need us to hear that. There's an excellence of soul that comes at a much more rapid pace when 
it's required a tug that God we're requiring it of God because we need it for our group we need it for our church we need it for our family we need it for our marriage God we're coming together and we want the power of the Holy Ghost the speed of our healing the power of the Holy Ghost to advance the mission of this church the power of the Holy Ghost to advance the mission of this job because all of them have we, we yield them all to you and God, we understand that our coming together avails or makes available to us this power that can speed things up in our lives and allow us to be influential in ways that give you glory. I want us to get that. I want us to understand that. We have to be willing to fight for unity, fight to come together. So again, and the carrot that I'm dangling in front of you is the possession of this power and the possession of this power rapidly. If you're like me, you're starting to feel like time really isn't on your side. And so if that's the case, we need to be working that much harder to resolve things with one another. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for even reminding me of that. Because you, Do you remember in the, in the scripture where uh, um, when Jesus tells us that if you got to alt with your brother, leave your gift at the altar and go reconcile with that brother. So you got to understand, watch this. The person who's bringing, bringing the, you got to see what they're talking about when they're saying bring their gift to the altar. What they're really saying is that they're bringing their sacrifice to the altar, asking for God to forgive them. That was the purpose of the altar, to, to slay the animals so that you can be forgiven of God. But when God says, listen, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't even sacrifice me until you fix it with your brother. I'm starting to, it's starting to click with me because it could almost sound like God is being punitive. I tell you, don't even bother to sacrifice. But what I'm starting to sense even now in my spirit is that God is saying, go fix it with your brother so that I can take care of your issue fast. I know you want to sacrifice. I know you want to ask for my forgiveness, but I, I want this. I want this power availed to you. I want this, 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 this speed. I want heaven to feel obligated to make this thing happen to you much quicker because it no longer just involves you. Involves, it involves you and them, you and him, you and her, you and them. It involves this group. And so now that we managed to do something that God has asked us to do, and let's be on one accord. Heaven is more inclined to move more rapidly. The Holy Spirit is now able to move through and do his thing more powerfully. God told us way back in Genesis when he was talking about Nimrod and those in Genesis 11, that once they got on one accord, nothing could be denied of them. Why? Because being on one accord unleashes a power even to those who aren't trying to please God. It is a principle that we can benefit from. And I hope you hear that. We got to fight for unity. Because we know what the payoff is. That God will entrust us. That the Holy Spirit will entrust us. With this power. That can do things. Suddenly. Suddenly 3,000 came to Christ. Suddenly the nation repented. Suddenly, your child yielded to the tugings of God at his heart. Do you want that? I want to live in some suddenly. And the return of the Holy Spirit says it can. It will happen. And we can manage to walk back into Jerusalem, walk back into our place of responsibility, scared or not long as we walk back together as long as we believe together then God will teach us show us reveal to us the beauty in our unity again the takeaway said process is unavoidable but the speed of your process is negotiable if you're willing to fight for unity it is through this unity that you get access to power. And this power has to be guided by your love for people and your determination to fulfill your calling. 
the Holy Spirit wants to introduce you to a world of sudden a life that reflects God moving faster than he normally will. I don't want to tease you, but this whole suddenly thing is if it's going to be like that all the time, but it will be faster than it would have normally taken place if we decide to do it together. Does it make sense? I'm hoping and praying that somebody tuned in tonight who heard this and said, man, I want to live in that world. That's, that's the kind of life I want to have. Well, that comes with the Holy Spirit living in you. But you can't get him until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. Jesus is the door, the one and only door that gives you access to the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the only way that you can be completely forgiven of your sin and cleansed of your sin, cleansed of your unrighteousness to the point where the Holy Spirit can now feel safe, be safe, be allowed to come dwell inside of you and give you access to his power. If you're ready for that life, Say this prayer with me. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of my confession and because of my faith, the Bible tells me I am righteous and I am saved. Holy Spirit, that now qualifies me to be your temple. Come live inside of me. And do all the things that the Bible said you would do. Lead me into truth. Heal me. Bring things to my remembrance. Set this captive free. And God, I will give you glory all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Young man, young lady, because you said that prayer, your life is changing. Absolutely changing. Also, we want to be a part of your life. And so if you'll do me the honor, do me the favor of reaching out to us. We'd like to talk to you. All you got to do is email us at info at wercym.org. And we, we will reach right back out to you and we'll begin this newfound relationship. You need some brothers and sisters in your corner. And we want to be that family for you. All right. So, so, so proud of you. If you're not in the air, if, if you're not, you don't feel led to connect, connect somewhere. You need a church family. You do. Guys, before you leave tonight, will you do us a favor? Will you bless us? Will you sow into this ministry so that we can continue to do the things that we do? Uh, you've been such a blessing to us throughout the pandemic. Uh, and, and as I hopefully believe that we're emerging from this thing. But we continue to have needs that we need to be able to meet. And so we need your partnership. You can uh, give your donations to us by going to our website at wercym.org forward slash give. If you have the GiveLify app on your phone, or if not, go ahead and download it. Find us out there. You can give to CYM that way. We have a cash app, a dollar sign, we are CYM. And if you'd like to mail it to us, our mailing address is 9 Beth Drive, Greenville, South Carolina, 29609. If you're on the face, if you're watching this on Facebook, just click on the donate button. You can give that way as well. I hope this lesson made sense to you. This series has been such a blessing to us. I, I'm prayerful that I have elevated your appreciation and opened your heart to love more deeply the person of the Holy Spirit. He is God in the earth. Thank y'all for giving me some time tonight. I thank you so much. Till next time. Much love.